In today's video, we're gonna be testing the Toit knot versus the improved trilene. The improved trilene has been our top knot for both mono and fluoro, but I've had multiple requests come in from members about the Toit knot. So I went ahead, pulled out the knot tester, and, uh, and actually tested them, and the results were very surprising. I actually have, now uh, I'm gonna switch over from what I used to use to a new one based on this test. So what I'm gonna do, I'm, I'm gonna show you the test procedures to make sure that you, you understand how it's done and you can critique it uh, however, you, however you like. After a quick overview of the test, I'll show you how to tie these knots in case you're not familiar with the names. They're actually pretty similar, but there's a, a distinction at the end that you'll see. And at the end, I'll go through the, the, the detailed analysis. We're gonna see which knot performed better, the Toit versus the Improved Trilene, and also if saliva is good or bad on these knots. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not, and you're gonna see the details in this video. Here's the process I use for this experiment. Number one, I have this motor over here that is gonna put tension on the line. We have two knots, I have head, head to head, so we have one knot on one side, one on the other, and I would rotate just to make sure that it's not, it's not unfair. And we have a scale over here to measure the exact breaking point. And, uh, and what I was doing, I wanted to see if saliva helped or hurt. Some, some knots is good, um, and many it's actually bad. And so between every test, I would do one test with saliva where I use saliva to cinch down the knots, and then I'll do one without. And for all of them, right before I broke, I would soak them in water for 10 seconds just to make sure that we can mimic the line being in the water before the break. So let me just show you how I do, how I do it real quick, right? Soak the line in the water, then I attach it onto this, uh, this scale, turn the motor on. It's a little bit loud, so I'm not gonna show you all of them. I'm gonna make sure I don't get hit in the face by this thing. So I'm gonna have the motor until it breaks. That scale is gonna log it. There we are, I didn't get hit in the face, that's good. So what I can see now is that this side was the trilene this one was the toit, so the toit one in this, in, in this instance, and I can see on the scale it's, it's at 15.74 pounds. So that's the process. Here's a quick demonstration on how these knots are tied. Both of them start out the same way, where we go through the hook or the swivel in this case, uh, then we go through it twice, go through it once, go through it twice the same direction, pull out a decent amount of tag. Let me just make it easier and have a nice uh, about six inches of tag. So to pull the tag out, Again, both these are the same, and, and uh, for the trilene, for the trilene knot, we actually go around the main line. I, I did it seven times to keep everything the same. So go around the, the main line seven times, and then we're gonna go after the seventh time, I, I wasn't counting, but seven times, and I go through that, that V and the circle at the beginning, right? So I left that, that opening on the, in between those first, two, those first two passes through the eye go through that and now we created this extra loop and then we take the tag in through that loop and tighten everything down. For the toit knot, we start the exact same way. We go through the eye once, go through it twice, let's pull out the six inches of tag. And then what we're gonna do, instead of going around seven times, we're gonna do, we're gonna do half, so we're gonna do four. So we're gonna go around that, that main line four times. Again, I think that was four there. And then we're gonna pass it through that eye Sorry, this is tough. I got a big camera in my face. So we're gonna go through that same exact spot. We're going through the loop we created as well as through the V of, of those twists. And now we have the same loop that we created. Now it just has four twists instead of seven. And so now with the toit knot, we're gonna go from behind through this loop four times. So one, two, three, four. So with the improved trilane, we went through that loop once with the toit, we go through that four times. That's really the difference. And then it's just tightened down from there. And what I found is that this toit knot is actually easier to tighten down. Let me just go ahead and just show you that right there. I can just pull it. I need to put a little extra little, little tension on that tag, but pull it and it, it cinches down uh, more easily than the trilene knot, which was a pro as far as tying. Here are the tables that show the results of these experiments. I started with regular monofilament, 20 pound Andy. And as you can see, first test dry, and I noted the loser and then the, and the breaking point of that test. And then the same thing with fluorocarbon. I used 20 pound cigar for this example. For those of you who still use fluorocarbon, uh, I recommend against it. After doing a lot of mono versus fluoro tests, mono 
actually wins almost all of them while being uh, more affordable. If you want to see those, uh, I'll put a link down below. But yeah, fluorocarbon, again, same thing. You see the strengths. As usual, the 20-pound monofilament uh, had a better strength than the 20-pound fluorocarbon. And uh, on the the interesting part, though, is on the the knot by knot, um, it was it was actually pretty evident that the trilene is a little bit uh, a little bit weaker than the toit. So um, especially with mono. So with the mono, I was just noting the wins and losses. And with with the regular mono, the trilene uh, basically overall it only won two out of eight. So it, it lost six of them. And and on dry, it, it actually did did really bad. So very telling that the trilene knot does require um, some saliva or at least at least it to be wet to make sure that you maximize the strength because again when it was dry it, it lost every time uh, and then when it was wet and when both knots had saliva tested against each other it was basically half and half and over here is the toit results it's obviously the inverse um, so you can see it won all the dry and then it was half and half on the wets. Uh, for flora, it was, it was even. It was actually even across the board. So that was uh, a little bit interesting to see that for whatever reason, the trilene knot doesn't doesn't react quite as well with mono as it does uh, as it does flora. Again, um, maybe different lines can change, but that was just the, the uh, what I saw in this one. So it's very clear that the the tr the toit, although it is has proven stronger, it's not going to be a, a game changer. Um, but just the fact that it was easier to tie. Um, relative to the trilene, and now I'm actually switching to the toit for the uh, the rare instances where I'm trying to uh, maximize my strength on a snug knot. Overall analysis on the saliva, uh, on you know saliva versus dry, as far as cinching them down. Uh, for the mono lines, uh, I, I just I just did the average breaks. So this did prove that these knots do better while while having some saliva on them. Um, and then same for fluoro. You know, right, both. Both uh, fluoro and mono uh, perform better with saliva versus without, which was which is actually contradictory to a lot of the prior uh, saliva tests that I've done, where the saliva actually does makes makes it not worse, makes it not weaker. So uh, I'll definitely be sure to do some more uh, more testing on this with uh, with more knots, so that we know exactly when we uh, need to use saliva and when we don't. So hopefully you found this enjoyable. If you have any questions about this test or uh, any recommendations on to make this better. Uh, please let me know. And if you're new to Salt Strong, just know that we're the biggest online fishing club for saltwater anglers. We specialize in redfish, sea trout, snook, and flounder. We have software that actually helps you find the fish. We have a ton of education to help make sure that you become a better angler. And we have massive group discounts on all the products you need. We now have over 60,000 members. So we have a very big discount program with that big of a membership. Any questions at all, again, comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. We hope to see you again soon.